Well, thank you for being with us again on Praying Through the Psalms, and we're still in Psalm 92. Uh, last time we took verses 1 through 5 of Psalm 92, and today we're going to kind of focus on the, the rest of the, the passage, which is verses 6 through 15. And this is a song for the Sabbath, is what its heading says. So let's just look at it this way. This is a psalm that will bring us peace and rest. Mm -hmm. As we rejoice in God's work, in what He's done, and the new habit that we're trying to form, if we haven't already ha uh, done this and do it on a regular basis, is start each day by thanking Him for His loving kindness and end each day by thanking Him for His faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Of course, it wouldn't hurt you to, in the morning, thank Him for both, and at night, thank Him for both. But to, to start and end the day with thanksgiving for God's love and then reflect on what He's done for you, even that very day, and for His faithfulness. Well, we're going to talk about the anointing now and God keeping us fresh and flourishing in our spiritual life. Rain, would you read the psalm for us? Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, on the harp with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has been my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no upright unrighteousness in him. Amen. Well, Amen. Thank you. That was a kind of a long passage, but thank you. I like verse 14. Well, why don't you read it again? They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Yeah, we'll have to remember that for when, <laughs> when we get when to we an get old age. Well, maybe we could write that down so that when we do get old someday, we could remember that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you know, that is a promise. What kind of an old person do you want to be? Do you want to be a grumpy old person? Or do you want to be a fresh and flourishing fresh. old person? Yes. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that. One quick thing, just because it's in the passage. God's enemies will perish. Your enemies aren't going to last forever. Now, probably he was talking about people that were persecuting whoever was writing this. But we, we have enemies. Most of the time, I think our enemies are not just people, though. Enemies can be our fears. Enemies can be um, situations that we worry about. Enemies can be the economy or whatever. Whatever comes against us. And yes, sometimes it is people. But they're not, they're not going to last. But those that stay fresh in the Lord, they're going to last. If you're laying up in bed at night not sleeping, are you thinking about enemies? Or are you thinking about the goodness of God? Usually we're stewing about enemies, right? But anyway, let's, let's look at this promise. What a great promise in verse 10. And I want you to be able to declare this. It says, but my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. Now, we're not used to that kind of imagery, a horn. And, and I looked at, at it a little bit. I said, what, what does that mean, horn? Uh, well, the Hebrew word can mean one of three things. It can mean a flask for oil. And I'm only guessing, but maybe they used to be made out of horns. Mm -hmm. You've seen a picture of, you know, it kind of would look like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it represents power or strength. Like the horn of an animal represents its strength, its power. And notice he ties it into a wild ox. You have exalted, uh, but my horn you've exalted like a wild ox. But actually the Hebrew word that horn comes from means to shine, to send out rays. To send out rays. There was one passage about the, the horn of a unicorn. And we think of a unicorn and there's just like rays coming from its horn, you know. Well, 
what can we make of this? That God, uh, you, you cause us, in verse 10, it says, but my horn, you have exalted. So God's going to do something. So Lord, the anointing you put on my life, if you want to look at it that way. Maybe that's a good way to translate it because it talks about an anointing in the same verse. Lord, because of the anointing on my life, you will lift me up. I think it's a good way to look at this verse. But I also think it's good that God's people should be shining because of that Holy Spirit work in our life. We should have strength and power because of that Holy Spirit work in our life. But however you translate this word horn, I want you to be able to say with confidence the latter part of verse 10 is a confession. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Every day God wants His Holy Spirit to touch your life afresh. Not just for those that minister. Certainly if I'm going to minister the Word or Nicole's going to minister in psalm, uh, singing and worship, and Lorraine ministers in her Bible study and in prayer, we definitely want the touch of the Holy Spirit on that. But don't we want the touch of the Holy Spirit on everything we do? So shouldn't we, no matter what our activities are that day, be able to say, Lord, I have been anointed with fresh oil. You anoint my life. And that's something to be confident in and excited about. You got some passages about anointing. I do. Psalm 23, verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Psalm 45, 7, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, uh, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. In 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22, now he has established us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Amen. So he, he anoints the believer. Mm -hmm. And then inside the believer, he gives the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of our relationship with him, of our future resurrection and redemption. But even now in the present, we are anointed. And notice that one psalm that Lorraine read, I think it was Psalm 45, uh, you've anointed me with the oil of gladness. Mm -hmm. Lord, would you anoint me to rejoice? Mm -hmm. Would you anoint me with joy? I believe God is glorified by a joyful people. Mm -hmm. And so let the Holy Spirit work in your life with His anointing. Let's look at verse 10, and then we'll move on. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Now, that word exalt, it can mean to raise up, to lift up. But you got some passages on that too that... If you're feeling down, God wants to raise you up. Yes. And God wants to raise you up to minister to other people by the anointing of His Holy Spirit. Oh, 1 Samuel 2, verses 1 and verse 10. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. I smile at my enemies. Yeah, that's better than thinking all these thoughts, right? Yeah. Because we're rejoicing in the Lord. Verse 10, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Amen. Uh, Nicole, I know you, you are gifted and called to lead in worship. How important is the anointing to worship? Oh, I think it is It is a scary thing to get up there in your own strength. It's a scary thing to get up there and think you're going to, there, that there's any point. If you're not operating with the Holy Spirit covering you and anointing you and being filled afresh and cleansed, mm -hmm. um, what's the point? If we don't have His presence, why, am I, why would I be in, in front of anyone or operating in that capacity at all? I yeah. think that you... It would be very, would be very counter. It would be productive. There would be nothing there, no good for it there. Yeah, um, you know, one of the things you delight in, Lauren. I didn't mean to slap you, but one of the things that you delight in is being a grandma. Mm -hmm. Can you be an anointed grandma? How does how does the anointing oh, yes. help you with grandchildren? Oh yes, 
they the, the the kids always say grandma can turn any any sentence any word into a bible story <laughs> you know i want to be remembered for that you know and even though they giggle now later in life they always turn grandma would make that into a bible story or you know what would grandma say and yeah yes i can be anointed to share christ mm -hmm. in words in my actions in my aroma mm -hmm in my caring, in my loving, in all those ways. Amen. You know what I think the key word here, too, well, there's so many great words here. I have been anointed, but don't stop there, yeah. with fresh, 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 fresh oil. Let your oil be fresh. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this new habit of starting every day by thinking of His loving kindness, ending every day by thanking Him for His faithfulness, and being a person of rejoicing all day long. Isn't that a part of having fresh oil? If we would live that way, our oil would be fresh. The Holy Spirit is continually being poured out in our lives and moving in our lives. And we're to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and so we looked at, at 1 Samuel 2, 1 and 10. Did you have any other verses on that? I have Psalm 148, verse 14. And he has exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. And Psalm 89, verse 17 and verse 24. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your favor our horn is exalted. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. Amen. Amen. Well, let's, let's look at the last uh, portion of this psalm. But before we do, let's take a break. And Nicole, lead us in song. Let's just worship along as we sing words from this psalm. And, and I believe there's a refreshing that comes when we worship. So would you lead us? here is fresh fresh oil and I know Lorraine uh, you you loved one of these uh, verses here I think it was verse 14 you said but let's talk about staying fresh all the days of our life because even though my body might get old the Holy Spirit never gets old I might be tired but he's never tired he's always fresh the Holy Spirit is always fresh and refreshing would you read for us uh, verses 12 through 15? And as she does, just listen to the words. Listen to the, the sound of these words, flourish and, and green. And it just has a, the picture of life. So Psalm 92, verses 12 through 15. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. The, the, the righteous are going to flourish. They're going to keep on bearing fruit and a lot of fruit even into their old age. Amen. Now, there's a couple of things that are important that we have to participate in. Look at verse 14. They shall still bear fruit uh, in old age, they shall be fresh and flourishing. That's what we want. That's, that's our goal. That's our outcome. But how do we get there? We'll go back ahead of verse. They'll be planted in the house of God. Now, house of God, I think, can mean two things, and both are very important. House of God means the gathering together of God's people. Mm -hmm. The local church is the house of God now. Timothy tells us that. But the, the house of God also represents the presence of God. And so are we planted in fellowship, 
in the local church fellowship? Are, are we planted there? And, and are we planted every day we experience the presence of God? Let there be a going down of the roots, of our roots of who we are, into the presence of God and into the people of God. We're planted. The people that I know that are of an older age, and yet, man, you still love to be around them because there's a fresh anointing on their life. Their people have been faithful for a long time to the house of God. They haven't been in and out and all over. They're faithful to the house of God. And every day they're faithful to enter the presence of God on their own too. Through prayer, praise, worship. And then notice declaring is a part of it too. Verse 15. To declare that the Lord is upright. He's my rock. There's no unrighteousness in Him. What, what are the words of our mouth? Are we declaring the, the uprightness of the Lord? Are we rejoicing and using our words to praise Him and declaring? Well, I think this is so important. If we want to want to grow old with a lot of fruit and flourish in our old age, be planted and be declaring the goodness of God, the works of God, uh, that He's our rock. He's, He's pure. There's no unrighteousness in Him. To declare the Lord is upright in whatever He does. He's just. He's upright. I'm not going to get bitter. God is good in all that He does. Declare it. So be planted and declare it. And final passage for the day before we end with prayer and song. What do you got there? I have Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Wow, a tree planted by the water will never never wither, will always flourish. Mm -hmm. Its leaf is never going to wither away. You can live a life from now until the day you go to heaven fruitful. Amen. There'll be some struggles, yes. But get in the habit of thanking Him for His loving kindness. Thanking Him for His faithfulness. Rejoicing in Him. Being planted. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you are anointed. Mm -hmm. Lord, would you close us in prayer and then Please, after we close in prayer, continue the video and just worship along. We want you to end this time with us with worship, but close us in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that we seek righteousness, Lord, that we seek to be closer to you, to meditate on you and your word. And we thank you, Father, for the oil of the Holy Spirit that um, comes into our heart, God, and gives us that joy and that peace and that depth of knowledge of you and helps our roots to grow deep when drought comes, Father God, that we don't wither. We thank you, Father God, that we stand strong in you by your Holy Spirit. We praise and love your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship him again. It is